Meanwhile, Captain Scarlet had just arrived at the presidential residence in a Spectrum saloon. I'm a very busy man, Captain Scarlet. Please be brief. Mr. President, Spectrum have imposed a maximum security cordon around your residence. Now, I would like your word that you will not attempt to leave for the next 12 hours. I'm sorry, Captain, but I have a full schedule. But the Misterons have threatened your life, sir. I get threatened every day of the week. Phone calls, letters. If I took any of them seriously, I'd never get any work done. Sir, I don't think you realize the extent of their powers. You've got to take them seriously. I have a heavy schedule this afternoon, Captain Scarlet. And that includes the launching of a ship. Remember, Mr. President, the Misterons killed the Director General of the United Asian Republic. All state leaders run the risk of assassination. All right, Captain, you win. But I must insist on holding my weekly press conference. Very good, sir. But we'll screen all newsmen with a Mr. On detector on entering the building. Still en route to the conference, the Mr. Nye's Tribune 3 had entered restricted airspace. The angels were quick to acknowledge the threat. Suspect intruder at 7 o'clock. We will challenge. Prepare to engage if necessary. SIT Symphony will adopt interceptor flight pattern. Taking up defensive positions, Harmony and Destiny Angels started to dive directly towards Tribune 3, narrowly missing the small plane. This maneuver did not frighten the Mr. On agent. Undeterred, he maintained course. The Angels turned for a second run as Tribune 3 continued its journey. Suddenly from behind, the Angels adopted escort positions either side of Brand's plane. This is a Spectrum Air Patrol. You are about to enter a restricted area. Alter course immediately. We have instructions to destroy any aircraft violating the restricted airspace. Change your course. You have five more seconds. Don't try and bluff me. I know you wouldn't shoot down an unarmed aircraft. You've been warned. This is your last chance. Have you visual contact with the intruder, Harmony? Yes, Symphony. He refuses to cooperate. Attack and fire a warning shot. SID. She pitched her aircraft into a steep dive to carry out her orders. OK, you win. My name's Marvin Brand. Please explain your presence in this maximum security airspace, Mr. Brand. Sure. I'm heading for the president's news conference. I'm a reporter for the Tribune. Very well, Mr. Brand. One of our aircraft will escort you to an airstrip outside the restricted area. If you can prove your identity, you will be free to proceed to the press conference by road. Well, wow. Another girl. You don't look quite so frightening without that missile button in front of you. Maybe I should teach you a lesson. Tagito, that is far enough, Mr. Brand. My father is a judo black belt third dan. And he taught you a thing or two, eh? No. I teach him. I am a black belt fourth dan. I guess you made your point. You want to see identification? Here's my press card. Hmm? That seems to be in order, Mr. Brandt. You are clear to proceed. Good. I've been looking forward to seeing President Roberts. I think the meeting could prove interesting. Most interesting. Any news, Captain Blue? No, Captain. We've checked out all the pressmen and they're clean. The Mistrons are leaving their attempt a little late. Yes. But there's less than an hour to go. We must stay on the alert. The Mistrons don't make empty threats. Having left the airstrip, his papers in order, Brand proceeded to the conference by car. A Spectrum roadblock was set up outside the presidential residence, and I was on guard with Captain Oker when I saw the car pull up a couple of hundred yards down the street. High on the roof of a nearby building, another interested party watched with binoculars. 
This is Captain Black relaying instructions from the Mr. Odds. You will carry out your mission. Your orders are to destroy President Roberts. And to conclude this meeting with the press, which I must say I have enjoyed, I would like to say one thing. We have all been under a great strain, but with less than 15 minutes to go to the deadline, it looks as if the Mistrons have not succeeded in carrying out their threat. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Here, here, here. Well, so far, Captain, Spectrum has done a good job. Again, with respect, sir, you haven't made it easy. Captain Oker, I've been watching that saloon parked across the street for some time. I think we better check it out. But as Captain Oker went to use the Mr. On detector, the black saloon started its engine. Slowly, it approached us. Then, just as it neared the roadblock, the car swerved across the road and headed directly for us. I had to dive out of its path as it sped off. Are you all right? Yes, I'm okay. Did you manage to get the detector around on that car? No, there wasn't time. There could be a connection between that saloon and the Mr. On threat. Well, we better tell Captain Scarlet. What is it, Captain Blue? A suspect driving a black saloon, license number 19B0419. He drove away from the presidential residence when we tried to question him. A Spectrum saloon is in pursuit, but he had a good start. Right. Well, as long as he drove away from the area, keep me informed. S.I.G. Trouble, Captain? Not really, Mr. President. Well, it looks as though there's not going to be a Mistron attack. There's still time for me to make that launching. I'm sorry. Well, look, Captain, uh, this was being kept a secret. I've got a special interest in that ship. It's being named after me. What was that? The atomic liner is going to be called the President Roberts. Of course. They could mean the ship. <laughs> <laughs>